Huysel's law describes a rate of fluid flowing through a tube such as a needle or a capillary. The flow rate depends on the pressure applied to the fluid, the diameter of the needle, the length of the needle, and the viscosity of the fluid. Algebraically, we can express Puissel's law as the flow rate is equal to the pressure times the cross-sectional area of the needle divided by 8 pi times the viscosity times the length of the needle. Here we have a commercial capillary tube of known diameter and length. We affix the capillary tube to an IV tubing and attach the IV tubing to a container of water suspended above the capillary tube. We can find the pressure on the fluid in the system by measuring the distance from the top of the water column to the bottom. The pressure exerted by a column of fluid, such as the water contained in our IV tubing, is equal to the density of the fluid times the height of the column times gravity. In this case, we have a column of water. So the pressure is equal to the density of water, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, times the height of the column, which we measured to be 0.74 meters, times the acceleration of gravity, or 9.8 meters per second squared. By this calculation, the pressure exerted on the water at the tip of the capillary tube is 7,300 pascals. So now let's collect some data. I open the valve on the IV tubing and allow the water to flow through the capillary into a beaker that I have placed on a balance. If I measure the amount of time necessary for 10 milliliters of water to collect in the beaker, I can calculate the flow rate. In this run, I see that 68.6 seconds are required to collect 10 milliliters of water. In order to verify the reproducibility of our experiment, we completed two more runs. At the end of three runs, we found that it required an average of 69.7 seconds to collect 10 milliliters of water. Now let's calculate the observed flow rate. The flow rate is defined as the volume of water divided by the time interval necessary for that water to go through the tube. The average time to collect 10 milliliters, or to use the official IUPAC units of volume, 1.0 times 10 to the minus fifth cubic meters of water, was 69.7 seconds. That means our flow rate will be equal to 1 times 10 to the minus fifth cubic meters divided by 69.7 seconds, or 1.44 times 10 to the minus seventh cubic meters per second. Okay, let's see how our observed flow rate compares to the flow rate we find using Poussel's law. To use Poussel's law, we need to know the pressure on the fluid, which we've already determined to be 7,300 pascals. The length of our capillary needle is 0.127 meters, which we measured using a ruler, and the cross-sectional area of the needle is 2.64 times 10 to the minus seventh square meters, which we obtained from the manufacturer. Going to the literature, we find that the viscosity of water is 1.01 times 10 to the minus third pascal seconds. Okay, we have all of the experimental data we need. Let's calculate the flow rate. All right, now let's take these values and plug them into Poussel's law to calculate a theoretical flow rate for this IV system. The flow rate will be equal to the pressure of 7,300 pascals times the cross-sectional area squared, and this product divided by 8 pi, divided by the viscosity, divided by the length of the capillary. This gives a predicted flow rate of 1.57 times 10 to the minus 7 cubic meters per second. Comparing the calculated value to our observed value of 1.44 times 10 to the minus 7 cubic meters per second, we see that we have only a 9% error. In summary, we've shown that Poussel's law can be used to calculate 
the flow rate of a fluid moving through a narrow tube such as a needle or a capillary. The rate of flow depends on the pressure, the diameter of the needle, the length of the needle, and the viscosity of the fluid.